Hi, welcome back. Um, we're going to talk about education and going to school back then and how it's a little bit similar to what we're doing right now during quarantine. So a long, long time ago, they didn't have the cool schools like we do today. Instead, they would have to go and learn from either a parent or a grandparent, and that's how they would gain their education. And that's how they would learn things like reading, writing, and math. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about those things today. But when we today learn how to write, we have to do one important thing, and that's learning our letters. And we often do that with our handy dandy alphabet. And mine looks a little bit different than the ones today. Sometimes the ones today are colorful, um, they're a lot bigger too, but they usually aren't made up of people. And this is my fun hodgepodge alphabet. And today, I also have a really fun hodgepodge doll. And he'll help us make some of these letters a little bit later. But for right now, I want us all to sing the alphabet. You think you can do that? Awesome! Okay, let's go ahead and sing. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, and Z. I tricked you, didn't I? There are two letters that are missing from my alphabet from back then. Can you guess what they are? That's right, one of them is my J. So all of you out there with names that start with the letter J, that letter was not in the alphabet, but they still had the sound. So they used the I as a placement for the J. And then I have one other letter missing. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's my U. So here I have TV, I'm missing my U. I know, and we have really fun words that start with U, like unicorn. But back then, they just used the V instead of the U. So unicorn would start with a V instead of U. Yeah. Now I did mention that these look like people, and some of them are really, really hard to make. Like for instance, the letter C. So I have my cool hodgepodge doll here to show us how to make that. <laughs> but there are some that I think that we can get up, get all our wiggles out, and do a couple of them together. What do you think? Awesome! Okay, let's go ahead and do a couple together. Alright, so I have my fun flashcards here to help us decide which ones to do. All right, I think our first one, let's try the P. What do you think, you can do it? All right, I'll help you out. Okay, we're gonna stand together, feet together, put our arms in a circle and lean to the side. And there you have your P. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. So what do we think? I think that we can do the letter T. So all you have to do is put your feet together, arms out, hands down, and head tucked in. And there you have your capital T. And from T, we can go straight into one of my other letters. Let's go ahead and try the Y. So feet still together, arms straight up, and there you have Y. And today, we even have fun songs like Y-M-C-A. <laughs> All right, and let's try one more. And this one, I think we can all do. It's my letter L. So let's go ahead and take a seat on the floor, legs straight out, and hands at your sides. And there I have my L. I think
think that was pretty fun. What do you think? Sounds great. But once we learn our alphabet, we use those to make things. And those things are called words. And once we have words, we know how to read. Does this look familiar? I think you know what this is called. This is called a book. And books today have beautiful pictures, and they have lots of color in them, lots of awesome words. But books back then weren't like books today. Paper was really expensive. So especially when you're learning how to read and how to write, you might not have a book. Instead, when you're reading, you might have something that looks like this. And this guy doesn't really look like a book. Instead, I think it looks a little like a fan, but this hole here would allow you to string some yarn through it and wear it around your neck as a necklace. And then this way, you could read what's on it. And these are called horn books. So if you remember from the introduction, horn books are made out of something. And I mentioned that this was a farm. And there's animals here on this farm. And can you figure out which animal would have a horn? No, it wouldn't be a sheep, it wouldn't be a pig, it wouldn't be a chicken, but it might be a cow because cows have horns, especially ox have horns. So they would take that horn and cover this paper so that it wouldn't get dirty. Because if you're wearing it all day long so that you can practice your reading um, and practice your letters and your numbers on the other side, then you wanna protect it because paper, like I said, was so expensive. So this would be made and you could go ahead and practice all those. And once you're really, really good at reading, you might read a couple of the books in your household. And back then in houses, there might be one or two books. Um, typically it would be a Bible or maybe a book about the law, um, about um, what's going on in the world, maybe even about the colonies here, which are now the United States of America. Um, but those are what our books would be about. So they wouldn't be the really fun picture books that we have today. But also when you're reading, you need to learn how to write. And today we have something called a dry erase board. And a long time ago, even when I was in school, we didn't necessarily always have dry erase boards. We had chalk boards. And our boards actually looked a lot like this. And it was a way that when you're writing on a really big wall, you can save paper. But back then, this was a way that they could reuse paper over and over with these slate boards. So it took the place of paper. And like I said, it's called slate. So we don't call them chalkboards, and that's because slate is a rock that you can actually find in Virginia. So we have our cool slate pencil, I have my slate board, and then I can practice writing. And I wrote where you're viewing today. So we have VBHM, Virginia Beach History Museums. But I can also write things like H-E-L-L-O, -L -L hello. <laughs> so this is something that they could use a long time ago in order to write their words, but they could also use it <clears throat> maybe to do a little bit of math. So let's do an easy one. So I have two plus one equals, can you guess what it equals? That's right, it equals three. Just like that. And so these once you got really, really good at writing and knowing your, your numbers, then when you're a little bit older, you'd be able to use something like this. I think we can all guess we know what this is. It's a feather. But a long time ago, feathers weren't just for decoration in our hair or to make us look pretty. 
Instead, they are also used for writing. So this is my ink well, and inside I would have ink, and then I could dip my quill in and write on paper with it. So this is something that even I'm not extremely good at, so that's why it's not here on my table. But this is something that we definitely would be able to use as an adult to write letters to each other. All right, so I've mentioned a lot about reading and writing. Let's learn a little bit about math. So back then, they had some really fun rhymes that would help them to remember their numbers. And for all the parents out there and teachers, you might even know this rhyme as we sing it. So kids, go ahead and follow along with me. We're going to sing it two times through. Okay, so it goes one, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. <laughs> I know, it's pretty funny. Let's go ahead and do it one more time together. Okay, one, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. <laughs> Very good. All right, before I have you leave today, I have one more thing that I want us to, to practice together. And that's using these really cool alphabet dice here. And we're gonna make some letters with them. So a long, long time ago, they may not have had dice just like this, but they would have had things that would have helped them to learn, especially at home, and get a little bit creative. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab mine and throw them here on the floor. All right, now let's try a nice good roll. And what do we have? So I have a M, P, R, E, a Q, and a U. All right, so let's see. What can I make with these letters? So let's try an R, a E, and let's see, is Ram a word? No, but what about Q, U, an E, that is a word, that's Q. All right, so that's the one I can see from here, but let's go ahead and roll again. All right, so I have a P, O, M, R, Z, and an A. And I see one right off the bat, and that's M, O, P, mop, perfect. And if we change out the O, we can add an A to make map, M-A-P. And if we change out the M, we can make wrap. And if we change out the R, we can make zap. So this is one of the ways that we can creatively learn our words. But I wanted to thank you all so much for tuning in um, and join us again as we learn about toys and games.